Praise God. Well, I don't know about you, but I had I have, I felt that the uh, praise and worship service this morning had a specially good flow to it, don't you? There was a really uh, just a release into worship that we are aiming for, and I, I really appreciated that very much this morning. And everybody's just flowing with that. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. Just thinking about it, we'll get into this message in just a second. How many of you have really been thinking about it at the start of this new year? That, you know, you feel like, I hope, what, what good things can come this year? What new things, kind of new chapter can happen in our lives? You know, I know that there's some that aren't even here today that, uh, that are t they're expecting some new things to develop their lives, and I know you must be the same thing too. Did you, do you, are you getting an excitement? Are you getting an excitement? You need to have an enthusiasm. You know, uh, I was watching, well, Stephen Furtick, you know, and him and other people uh, that really say that the only way you, you, your dream is going to be alive and the only way you're going to accomplish anything is if you stay excited about it. Right? Right? I mean, it's easy for you to get a, it's inspired about something and excited about something and then just kind of because you're dealing with the processes of life and you got your challenges and you got to go to the job every day and all these things, it just kind of begins to wane and go away and dis diminish, diminish. But I want you to know that it's up to you. It is up to you to keep your enthusiasm high and we'll try to do our best to help you. <laughs> we'll try to cheerlead you into that a little bit. <clears throat> But it's up to you to say, Lord, you know, in other words, this is what I'm saying. I, I'm just like you. I have times when I find that the fire's trying to kind of dwindle down a little bit and the passion's trying to go out a little bit and trying to get the tired attitude, you know, and, and you know, we're you know, fighting with this and wrestling with that. And, you know, and uh, sometimes we all want to just get on a jet plane and go a thousand miles away and stay there for a couple months, right? <laughs> or a, a long car drive or something. But anyhow... The point of it is, is if you be, and I, and I have had to fight with that a little bit, but I'm okay, I'm good in Jesus' name. If you get to where you're, uh, you feel like your fire is starting to go out a little bit, you got to get alone with Jesus and start doing some, some radical praise and get your Bible open in and get together with other Christians and sit there in a the little room with three or four of you and say, isn't God good? Yeah, isn't God good? Pass the coffee. Isn't God good? Yeah, we're having a good time. Amen. And, you know, and uh, can, can I have another biscuit or whatever it is, you know. And just have a good time and have happy times and just really keep the fire going because it is up to you and it is up to me. You know, I don't want to get an old man's attitude. And you know, I'm older than a lot of, some of you, a lot of you. <laughs> I don't want to get an old man's attitude. An old man's attitude is this, well, we've been at this for a long time. It's time to kind of just put her down into low gear, kind of kick back and pull back and just sort of uh, coast a little bit. You know what? I'm going to let you know this. God does pro not, not prepare permit his servants to coast, right? Because if he sees you getting into coast mode, he'll give you some little obstacle in your way that'll cause you to say, oh, I better get back serious with God. <laughs> just because he wants you to try to stay close to him, amen? And so I want to just tell you, we need to have an enthusiasm about us when we walk in this place, a happiness and an expectancy and we're going to expect to see great things. And when I hear the radio ministry, I listened to it this morning in both stations to make sure they played the right program like I have to do. And they did. And, uh, but when we're getting the word out and all that, everything that we're doing together. And friends, right now we're just kind of waiting through the thaw and everything. But in spring and in the summer, we're going to do a lot of activities. Reaching children and teenagers and, and a lot of other things. And so I want you to just say, you know, if you ever see yourself starting to Lose your enthusiasm, lose your faith, lose your vision, or I see it kind of dwindle down. It's up to you. It's your responsibility to get yourself with God <laughs> or call some brother or sister. You know what? And to encourage you, this is what I do a lot. I've been, especially recently, I've been watching a lot of these old John Osteen ministries from the 1980s, 1990s. Joel's dad, John Osteen. And that guy was a firecracker. He's on about five foot eight, and he's just a little firecracker. And he just, just preached, preached his heart out every time he, got, time he got together, and he didn't put up with negativity. Oh, by the way, that reminds me how. Oh, okay, we're going to do it again. <clears throat> didn't mean to do this, but we're going to do it again. All right. You just kind of repeat after me, <laughs> unless you want to put it up on the board. Because we did do our offering this morning. 
And uh, Linda, you want to go back down to that bottom thing there? No, you're, are you on the on the easy worship? Can you go down back to the song service today and, and go back to that last one about confessions for the blessing? I've got to start remembering this because we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Lord, this is my seed. Now, now, you just pretend you still got that offering in your hand that you put in that plate a while ago. We're going to start doing this in the right order, I promise you. Lord, this is my seed. I'm sowing it in faith for a harvest of miracles. We are believing for our whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance, divine favor and blessing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, debts demolished, royalties received, I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out, and all I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> okay. I know, I'm sorry, but we're gonna start doing it in order and we're gonna do it because I believe that you need to just believe that when you put anything into the kingdom of God, you can look for him to bless you back, amen? I mean, you're not giving money just to get money, but you know, I heard somebody say one time, God will either, re, re, he'll either bless you in more money or in things money can't buy. You know, peace of mind, seeing your kids saved and all kinds of beautiful things, you know, like that. Faithful, ready workers. Let's talk about that this morning. Faithful, ready workers. Is uh, everything recording? All three? Th <laughs> oh, that's it in the camera, okay. Hallelujah, thank you back there. Faithful, ready servants, Luke 12. It says here, and you see the workers there across the screen doing various jobs. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourselves like men who wait for the master. In other words, looking for the boss to walk in the door any minute. When he will return from the wedding. Or come back from the wedding. <laughs> that when he comes and knocks, they may open him, to him immediately. Immediately. Oh, wait a minute. Is that him out there? Oh. Who's at the door now? Looked out the window. That's the preacher out there. Wait a minute. Hurry up. Straighten things up. Put that away. <laughs> Let's do that. Wait a minute. Oh. Well, you know, not that you have to worry about impressing me, but the point of it is, is Jesus is going to come suddenly. And, you know, we want to be able to say, Lord, I've served you and done everything with all my heart in a way to please you and to help people in Jesus' name. It says, when he comes and knocks, he may, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. Talking about rewarding those who have been faithful in the work of the Lord. Father, bless this word and all the things you want to teach and tell us about it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. On the job every day. Think about this. On the job every day. You know how you know you don't keep a job very well if, if the boss says, I want you here Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. And Monday you show up at 8.15 and Tuesday, oh, I had a flat tire. I couldn't make it. Wednesday you get there about 10.30. And uh, uh, Thursday uh, as you walk in, he says, uh, uh, come and see me. Let's come to my office. Let's have a talk. You want to give me a real quick explanation, be, explanation before I decide I'm going to fire you over here, here today. But, but, well, but, but. And he said, that sounds like excuses to me. We'll just wish you well in your future adventures. Thank you. Turn in your time card. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, and I've been in places where I thought, man, this guy, he's not doing his job. He's not showing up. Why don't they do something about this guy? You know, and I'm glad... You know, that, you know, finally if something's done, either they straighten up and do better, and so he can pull his load, or they learn how to do better in the future or somewhere else. <laughs> Colossians 3.22, bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service. The boss is watching. You better perk it up a little bit. As men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God, sincerely, doing a good job, because you reverence God. That's it. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. 
and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Think about that, friends. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Eh, I guess we'll show up and help the pastor out today. Or, eh, I guess I'll go help out at that kid's outreach today. I don't really want to go, but no, no. Nobody here thinks like that. Thank you that you don't. But, <laughs> but in other words, that's just like I said a while ago. Let's do everything with enthusiasm. Get excited about it. Get the vision. And, you know, believe in people. Here's the thing. Sometimes people are interested and excited about their thing, but they're not excited about your thing. Well, if somebody says, can you come up and come over to the church on this certain day and help me out? And, and yeah, I'll be there. And then go and do it with enthusiasm, like you're glad to be there, like you really want to help, you know. And, uh, and so don't just be excited when it's your thing, when it's your project, when it's your department, but it, be excited and helpful even no matter what you're doing to help out here at the church or on your job or helping out around your house to keep the home in order, all those things. It's a good idea to do it hardly as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Suddenness of his coming. Well, think about it. In this passage, it talks about that. It talks about how suddenly the guy that's going to call you into account for your, your service is going to show up. Luke 12, 38, starting verse 38, it says, And if he should come unto second watch, or come unto third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you be also ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And see, some people will say, well, it depends on your view of eschatology and end time events and whether you, where you think we are as far in the end time tables and all this kind of thing. I just know this. He said, I'm going to come suddenly, be ready. That's the two things I really know. I'm going to come suddenly, be ready. Which means I want to be doing my best for him, amen? Now, friends, I don't serve God out of, he'll, he'll hurt me if I don't. I, I serve God because I owe him everything. And I love him, and it's a privilege to be involved in him. Do you know when I'm up here and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on me, I feel this partnership with me and God and the Holy Spirit. And this is me and God up here doing this thing. But anybody that's ever been used up here on the platform today, there was a lot of that going on this morning in the praise service, and that was beautiful. And that was wonderful. But do you know that when you show up here to just help paint the walls or clean the church or do something else, there's an anointing on you at that moment for that thing too. You are in partnership with the Lord in that moment. Or you come over all the, all the things that we've done at the uh, fellowship hall over the last several months and just things on the grounds and property and things like this that we do. Or just meeting with somebody, praying with somebody. There's the presence of God. There's this thing of partnering with the Holy Ghost. Even in things that are mundane and get your hands dirty, partnering with the Holy Ghost to, to be working along with him to do that. So I think... If you can think of it that way, you'll be more excited and more dedicated and, uh, and happy about being part of just work days around the church or whatever it takes. Or, you know, I, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the neatest keep things in order kind of guy. My wife knows that, but I try. And I do know this. I don't just all the time leave it up to her to, to, to clean up the kitchen. I cook dinner a lot of times, and a lot of times I'm putting stuff away after, but not sometimes she'll do it too. And so, and, and in that, though, there's a joy of serving and just using what God's given you as a gift of talent and interest to be benefit to his namesake. Amen? I know when God likes it when I do things for my wife. Right? I think he honors me just as much when I do things for my home and for my family as when I'm doing things here. But I'm not going to neglect what I'm called to do here for that, but I'm going to do them both in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, you've also be ready that is, uh, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. The thing about a sudden event is, I know it's coming, but I don't know exactly when. When it does come, it'll be sudden, but I know it's coming. If you have any idea that it's coming, you'd be foolish not to prepare as soon as you hear that it's on and that it might happen someday. In other words, today's your day to get ready for the sudden thing that might happen who knows when, right? 
and, and by just living close to God, being full of the word of God, being attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, lead me, guide me, teach me, connect me with people in a way that you can flow through me to help them. In Jesus' name, how many of you feel that? Did anybody here feel that besides me today? In Jesus' name, maybe not, anybody? Okay, okay, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God in Jesus' name. Reward of the ready. The blessed are those servants when the master, whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. Just think about that, friends. Now, did you, do you get that image up there? He says that if you're one of those servants that when he comes, finds you in the middle of doing good thing, things and obeying him and doing his work, he's gonna make you sit down. Just Do you, do you get the image of, of the Last Supper, the night before his crucifixion, and he took off his regular garment, put on a servant's garment, got down with a towel and wiped and cleaned the dirty feet of his disciples. Jesus' humble service to these disciples, many of them that just keep messing up and failing, yet he's washing their feet, honoring them, cleansing them. And with that, you get the picture of the fact that he's gonna gird himself and have you and me sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb when we get our rewards for being faithful servants. Amen? Amen. You know, it's like you go to a banquet and uh, you, you're used to church pitchings where you think you need to get up and help and they say, no, no, sit down, we got it covered. Can I help you with this? No, 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 it's all covered. You just sit down, we got it all taken care of. Well, when it's all over, can I help you clean? No, 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 you didn't come for that. We got it. We got this. Just be served. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Well, that's what it's going to be like when the Lord comes and we... We are called before him at the judgment seat of Christ and he puts a torch to our works to see if they last through the fire and the things that are left that are not wood, hay, and stubble, but gold and silver and precious stones, the things that are left after he, after he puts a fire of test to our works, the things that are left, the good works, the honest things, the sincere things from our heart that are left, he'll sit you down and he'll give you a plate full of food and he'll just serve you. Just think of that, friends. It's hard to imagine what it's going to be like. Have anybody, I know some of you may have, but I've seen on the internet and maybe even some cards I looked at what looks like a heavenly banquet set up. And they show this table and it's oh, the most ornate stuff and it looks like the table goes on for a thousand miles. <laughs> Can't see to the other end of the table. It goes into infinity because of all the millions that'll be at the, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Friends, you're going to get greatly rewarded, greatly rewarded. This world, has got, this world has got nothing but junk compared to what God's going to reward you with. The things we work for in this life, God bless you. Have a nice home. Have a nice car. Have nice things in your house. That's great. I love it. I hope that you do. But I want you to know that the thing I'm working for more than anything is the nice things I'm going to have up there. Amen? And the very nicest thing, which is to look upon the face of Jesus in heaven. That's the best thing of all. And see my father God there on his throne. All the millions of saints around the throne of God. The angels of God. And that glorious, beautiful place. The music is beautiful and the colors are so vivid. And the smells are unbelievably pleasant. And, and beautiful odors of flowers and all kinds of things. In that scene called heaven. Around the throne of God. Myriads and myriads of saints and angels and people all around the throne of God. When he calls us around there and we get to look upon him and worship him there in heaven. And that's part of our reward. Is anybody feeling this just but, but me? Am I the only one seeing this and feeling this? Come on. Say something. I believe. And I hope that you're going to look at that. I know that you're... Hallelujah, shut up, You're in this world, and I'm in this world. We deal with this world, life, 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 life. Dirty dishes in the sink. A couple loads of laundry over there to be dealt with, and, and we got a puppy that we have to watch over all the time. You know, that sort of thing. But, you know, I'm still not going to get my eyes off of heaven. I'm still not going to get my eyes off the ultimate reward. I'm still not going to get my eyes off of the fact that I'm going to see him someday, and that will be when I'll say, yeah, trouble, I never had any trouble. I'm looking at Jesus. <sighs> Doubters and scoffers and opponents and enemies in this world, who is that? 
I'm looking at Jesus. Amen? So that's why we're going to be faithful servants. Why you're going to show up and help the church do its mission. And that's why you're going to be helpful in every situation, your home and on the job and everywhere you go, to shine as a light and be diligent and be a faithful servant and do your best in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the job when you don't think the boss is watching, but he is, and you get caught in the act of being good and working hard and going the extra mile, you have just set yourself up for a promotion, right? You've just set yourself up for a promotion. You know, this is it's funny. I, you know, people talk about getting caught being bad. Well, uh, I've heard people talking about, I, I got caught being good. <laughs> you know, I want to catch you being good. So you can, and I'm just going to believe God to reward you, friends, for that. There's a thing called character and integrity. You ever heard those words? I know you have. Character and integrity. And one of the things about a character and inter- integrity is that I'm going to be the best me I can be and do the best I can do at all times, not just when somebody's watching. And not just when somebody's there that I might want to get something from them, but at all times because I love Jesus and he loves me and I love people. And I want to set a righteous and consistent example before everybody that ever looks upon my life. And you're looking at a man here today who's not perfect. My wife knows, everybody knows I'm not perfect, but I try to do my best with a humble and sincere heart to love God and serve God. And when I do mess up, what you do every once in a while, because, you know, you know I don't mean, I'm not talking about getting in sin. I'm talking about just making a mistake on something I say or do or a decision sometimes every once in a while or uh, the way you react to people or circumstances sometimes. Those are things where you sometimes can fall short. And so you got to just say, Lord, forgive me, help me. If you've got to ask somebody else to forgive you, ask them. And then go forward in Jesus' name, amen. So working hard, going the extra mile, and if you get caught being good, you're going to set yourself up for a promotion in Jesus' name. Finding us faithful stewards. Stewards of what? Yeah. Stewards of opportunities. We're going to talk about a few things, areas where you can be stewards. This first one is about opportunities. What door, what open door has God's grace brought your way? Jesus' name. Lovely little church on a hill, little hill in a town called Harrodsburg in Monroe County. A town that used to have a railway station and its own high schools, beauty shops and stores and all kinds of things, even a few saloons. <laughs> A place that was a humming, buzzing little place where a lot of things happened. Well, now it's not a humming, buzzing place so much. The county government won't let them to open any new businesses here locally that can employ people and help the town live and grow. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. But I want you to know something. You are not nowhere. Come here. Come on. In this house, in this place, on this hill, you are not nowhere. Amen? You are somewhere. Why? Because you are somewhere in the heart and mind of God. That's why you're somewhere. (laughs) You're not nowhere. You are somewhere. Because God... I just pray that God really begins to birth in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, birth in the hearts and minds of our brothers and sisters, both those with us today and those that will be back with us next week. Birth in our hearts and minds, God, a vision for the the largeness and the vastness and the greatness of this great opportunity, this grand opportunity. Lord, this grand opportunity called Church on the Hill, that when you draw people here to be in your glorious presence and power and you give them giftings and anointings and they say, yes, I'll dedicate myself to the the purpose and vision of this church and this people and my God, that, Lord, they will find themselves greatly rewarded with a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit. Amen? Amen. Much return on your personal investment. Hallelujah. And you will not be disappointed. There will be this day, friends, when this place is so full. We may have to have more than one service. Parking won't be enough. Something's going to happen that will give us an inkling that, wow, God has done a revolutionary thing on this property. Stewards of opportunities. What doors God's grace brought your way? Look at it as an opportunity. I preached a message one time about the gift of opportunity. That people say, well, that's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing. You know what? Anytime God allows you to do anything, that's not nothing, right? 
It's really something. Yeah, I, could, I could go over some things that we've done over the years of our ministry, but I just know this. Every time I approached anything with a, with a real vision for the possibilities there, God was able to do some good things. And if I didn't approach it that way, then God was limited by my refusal to catch the vision of God for that house. And then I had to wake up and realize, hey, big God, any place, any place, any place the great big God takes you, he can do a big thing, Amen. And right here, he's doing a big thing, and you're going to see it in big, big time ways, even this coming year. What open door has God's grace brought your way? Do you value it simply because it came from God? And you consider it an honor to serve the Lord? It's an honor to serve the Lord in Church on the Hill, in Harrodsburg, Indiana, in Southern Indiana. Amen? It's an honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Also, stewards of finances, another man's property. You know, the idea of a stewardship is that you're, it's not your property, it belongs to somebody else, but you're doing a good job, proper job, diligent job managing it and taking care of it, right? That's what stewardship is about. Stewardship of finances, start with what you have, not worried about what you don't have. Well, Lord, I'd give you a thousand bucks a week if I could. He said, well, you can give me 15 bucks a week, and will you do that? Well, Lord, I'm gonna wait till I can get to that thousand dollars a week, then I'll start giving. You know what? You've got to give from what you, what you have, amen? You know, because I know when I, when I went to Bible college and we were, I was, I'm serious, I'm serious. We went to Lester Summerall's Bible college and I, I didn't even have a job. We got, a, we got an apartment and I paid some down payment on my tuition and I was still out looking for a job while I was already signed up to be in, in school. Uh, it's a 15, I had a, I think 15 or 18 semester credit hours that first semester. Anyhow, I was in there quite a bit and didn't even have a job. And so I finally landed a part-time service job at the Kmart when Kmart used to have automotive work that they did. And I was making, I think, uh, a buck and a half, two, maybe two bucks an hour, something like that. I forget what it was. It wasn't very much. And uh, maybe two bucks an hour. I don't know. You can't, can't imagine that. You can't imagine that. That's 1975. Can you imagine that? And I was just glad to be there. I was just glad to be in the will of God at that Bible college. Loving my family and knew it, working hard to be, just enter this place of destiny and purpose and calling God had for me. And later on it got a lot better, but I started tithing off of that income. And that's when God had supernatural things start to really happen for us. If you're charged with managing ministry money, that's right, you know, we have Sister Donna is we're acting as a treasurer in this church and she does a great job. She's going to have an extended term for the next three years and, and, uh, and then we're going to add some other positions to the board at our annual business meeting. We'll be talking to you more about that. But uh, anybody that's charged with managing ministry money, I mean, when you see the reports and all the details laid out, I think, you know, wow, I have no problem at all. I'm so happy we got somebody that's really doing such a great job. If you're charged with managing ministry money, or if somebody hands you 20 bucks out of petty cash, bring me back the receipt. I need the receipt. <laughs> Do you see integrity and diligence as a top priority? Caretakers and managers are not, are not owners. Next, next page, please. Stewards of the greatest truth. Okay, so we're stewards of opportunities. We're stewards of you know, finances and, and those kind of assets in this world. Also stewards of the mysteries of the gospel of Christ itself. You and I have been given the pure gold of the message that can change life and eternity, redirect an eternity. Jesus has given to you and me to be witnesses and ministers and managers of the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ's life, saving life, changing gospel to the world. So are we having, do we take it with honor? Do we... Treat it like it is pure gold. Do we see that as a kind of a treasure? Oh Lord, this gospel, this word, this truth that I have, this John 3, 16 that every child of God ought to be able to share with somebody and other scriptures as well and testimony. Tell them what God's done in your life. Do you see that, in other words, the Bible you know and the testimony you have are your treasures that are not just to be wasted, amen? 
the Bible that you've heard and been taught and that you know and the testimony that you have in your heart and mind of what you know God has done for you over the years, that is a treasure to be nurtured and invested and developed and used as a witness to this world. Amen? Come on. Amen. So you need to see that and be a good steward of that kind of thing in Jesus' name. Second Peter 3, the skeptics procrastinate. Uh, you know, they, they, they say, well, he's not coming. He'll, he'll be, you say so, whatever. Second Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 3, says, Knowing this verse that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Y'all say it. Jesus is coming soon. Be ready. Jesus is coming soon. Be ready. I've heard that all my life. You know, how old are you? I'm 47 years old, I'm, or I'm 56 years old, or I'm 80 years old, or I'm, I'm 22 years old, or whatever, and you say, wow, what a long, long time you've had to examine the whole relativity of truth to humanity from God, and you've got, you, in your wonderful, long, expansive life, you've seen so much that you know everything. Does anybody get what the point I'm making here? We, don't, we haven't lived long enough to hardly know anything. <laughs> I don't care if you're 80 years old or 90 years old. We're still just learning, right? That's why you have to have childlike faith all your life because you need to keep on saying, Daddy, tell me more. Jesus, tell me more. Father, teach me more. I want to know more. I want to do better. I want to go higher. And it says here that, but anyway, they, they think they know it all. So they're saying, he ain't coming. Y'all been saying that forever. Well, so what? You know what? The Bible says that your life is a vapor, comes and goes, Amen. And if you live to be 100, that's like, compared to eternity, 100 is like invisible. You know, you put the, you against, your image against the image of the earth even, let alone the sun or a large star, you're invisible. You're so tiny you cannot be seen in contrast to that larger thing, right? And so with all of that, we say that your 100 years, if you live that long, it's like it never happened in the light of eternity. I mean... I'm not saying your 100 years didn't count for anything, whatever the Lord gives you. I'm, what I'm saying is to say that you've ever reached the part where you've been around enough, seen enough, learned enough, know everything, seen everything, to where you can never rebut the truth of the word of God, you'll never get that smart. Amen? And God says, be ready, be servants, be workers. For this they willfully forget. Some people will willfully forget things. Anybody, you know, anybody that used to be in church and then they go away and they don't, they don't come back, but they used to be pretty involved. For a little while, they're trying to will, willfully forget something. But then we pray the mercy of God and he reminds them and they get back involved and praise God for that. They willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. In other words, they willfully forget that there was a time before that God judged the world. And when he says, I'm going to judge the world again, he means it. And you can take the first time to have faith and confidence about the next time. Because what 